So I've gotten a few TV, film, and commercial placements lately. I haven't been talking about them because they're kind of low profile. But I did recently tweet and post on Instagram that I landed a placement with Netflix. I promised to talk about it when I had more details. Right now, I still can't talk about the specifics of the placement, but a lot of producers wanted to know how to get placements in TV shows or Netflix shows or commercials. And so I figured I would take that question straight to the source. In other words, I asked that question to the owner of the company that got me the Netflix placement. This video is a uh, part of a longer video that was uh, created exclusively for B Club members. You can join B Club. It's part of the Music Entrepreneur Club. It is a music business mentorship program, and this is the kind of uh, content that we that we have for our members all the time. Uh, the part that you didn't see is the members being able to ask direct questions of Brian Hamilton. Uh, who runs Beats and Rhymes uh, Music Library. And they're a music library that's responsible for everything from theme songs on major television networks to commercials to sync placements in online commercials. So as a producer, if you want to get into licensing your beats to film, TV, commercials, etc., but you're not really sure where to start and you're not sure how to navigate that part of the industry, this video should answer a lot of those questions for you. Probably the, the vast majority of popular recordings out there are difficult to license. If I wanted to license Old Town Road right now for a, for a film, that would probably be a pain in the ass, right? Well, yeah, and because it'd probably be crazy, a crazy amount of money, you know? I mean, it'd be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars maybe for a, a song like that. Definitely in an advertisement, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for, for something like that, sure. So that's another reason why somebody will come to us because they don't want to pay a major label rate um, they want to pay some, pay for something that they can afford. That still sounds great. Um, so they utilize services like us that have relationships with uh, uh, different independent artists, and they want to utilize our network, whether it be for music that we already have, or like an example, something that we worked on together a few weeks back, which I wish I could announce, but we, it still hasn't aired yet. So I can't really announce uh, exactly what that job entailed, but because we signed the NDAs. Um, but uh, but anyhow, um, gosh, uh, uh, yeah. So just easy to clear, meaning um, the rate works out for the client, and they just have to deal with one party. They don't have to negotiate with five or six different people. Um, it's just it's, it's seamless for them. Got it. So. What can, this is a really general question, but it's one that producers are, are always asking. What can producers do to get their music placed in TV and film? You got to work with the publisher. I mean, sure, there's chances that a supervisor or television editor uh, or uh, uh, director of music at a company and they might want to work with you, but... To be honest with you, the chances of that happening are, are, are pretty slim. They they could happen, but you know they're they're you know you could also win the lotto, you know. But it's pretty tough. Um, the odds might for 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 getting a having a relationship with a, a music selector at a at a company uh, in license working with licensing is um, is a lot easier than winning the lotto. But it's still pretty tough because uh, you got guys like me with 15 years experience that do this every single day, and it, it's still tough for me too. Yeah, I know a lot of producers are trying to, f to to network with music supervisors directly. And oftentimes music supervisors go through companies such as your company and they have these, you know, longstanding relationships with a company that's or a library that's consistently giving them music for their TV show or for their commercials or for their clients. Um, so it's, it's hard to break in as an individual into that uh, into that scheme when you're not very hard connected to the publisher right so it, would you recommend uh producers or, or independent artists to form relationships with music supervisors still i mean if you have a relationship absolutely keep keep that relationship but i i wouldn't recommend putting all your eggs in one basket and trying to have relationships with different people that put music in, in 
projects because it's really hard to get those people uh, on the phone or to reply to your email. Competition for this industry is extremely fierce. And another reason why a company, uh, a music supervisor or, or producer of a television program would want to work with a company like mine is because they know we have a lot of experience in this space. We dot our I's and cross our T's. And so that removes the, a lot of liability that they might be uh, concerned about, uh, you know, because sometimes people say, oh, this is sample free. Um, and it's not sample free, but uh, I can't, there's dozens, maybe hundreds of times that people have sent me music saying, oh, no, this is sample free, just because they think that maybe I don't have a, a background in hip hop to be able to recognize something or be able to understand beats enough to be able to even just tell, oh, this, this is a sample that's been chopped up and they think I'm not going to be able to recognize it or it's unrecognizable, therefore, uh, it's, it, don't worry about it. But we don't know what technology is going to exist tomorrow that's going to be able to tell that that's a sample. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things that I, I tell producers, man, if you sample, you have to be forthcoming about it if you're selling that beat to a client. Um, Absolutely. Definitely, well, definitely definitely don't lie about it. I'll tell you, uh, all those people that send me beats that say they don't have samples in it, and they do have samples, especially if that's the first time they've ever tried to submit stuff to me, I'm, I, I'm not trying to see what – there's no sit round two. Well, yeah, because they lied. I mean, you can't yeah. – be relationships period but certainly relationships in the music business aren't that are based on lies don't last uh so how is how is your company form relationships with producers and recording artists because you have quite a bit i mean i'm i'm one of them but i'm i'm probably one of the newer producers that you work with you have long-standing relationships with rappers singers songwriters beat makers djs so forth um really just try to do good business for people and then they, they come back. Um, I also, I, I hand select the whole catalog. So um, if I like a particular composer and they're easy to work with and they're reliable, then I'm going to continue to work with them. And if I'm making them money or giving, I'm getting them placements or exposure or helping them out in any way, then they're, you know, it's a, it's a full circle. So, and, and I'm always looking for new stuff. Um, you know, online on Instagram, I got my ear to the to the street. Um, I've been working in hip hop for. You know, I started as a DJ. I used to DJ on major radio twenty something years ago. Uh, you know, I, I'm I I'm not that old, but I was DJing on major radio as a teenager. Um, so I I know my hip hop, and therefore because of that, I seek out stuff. But I'm I listen to you know stuff that people send me. And I, I just want to say, if you are going to send me something, I, I'll check it out, but put your best foot forward. So how is a, a beat made for TV or, or film placement different from a, a beat made for a rapper or singer? Well, part of it depends on um, the usage of the beat. Um, for background cues that go in, sit in, as a, what we call a music bed behind uh, um, dialogue, characters talking and things like that, I, I can't stress enough how important minimalism uh, and having sparse instrumentation is because when you have background cues and you have horns going off or crazy synths going off when characters are trying to talk, it's not going to get used, just period, because it'll be a distraction from the characters talking. However, a song with those elements could work great for a, uh, a, a transition shot from scene to scene where they need where they don't have dialogue and, and characters talking and stuff um you know uh, but but i i can say this um there's a lot more need for background music beds than there is for transition team scenes because there's just a lot more a lot of talking happening during the show so overall minimalism is probably the best policy yes less is more for sure um it's about functionality. That's something good to, to think about if you're creating music for TV. Think your music has to be functional. Your music's, unless it's an advertisement, your music isn't the star of the show. Your music is just an element uh, uh, helping the, 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 the project. Um, if your music is selling it, then that would be the forefront in an advertisement or something like that. Um, but th those are fewer 
uh, than all the different background placements you can get. But, you know, we, we go for all of them. So yeah, I guess what is, what style. Which, which ones uh, tend to pay the most and which ones are, are the most common? Oh, man. I wish I, I wish I could tell you because then I would just go for those. It's, <laughs> it's across the board. Um, I've had jobs for $25,000 multiple times and then the same type of job for, you know, $1,500. That's a similar job. Uh, it just really depends on the client's budget, what they want to spend, um, what you're willing to send. You know, somebody says, oh, you know, we have a budget of $1,000 for this or whatever, I might not send, you know, or I won't send certain songs because I just don't want to license them for that much. Not that I know that they're going to select them, but I don't even want them part of the, uh, an option. Um, so it, it really depends on the, on the, on the client, the, pro, the, the, the budget. It also depends on the rights they need. For instance, if something's just going online, it's only going to cost X amount of dollars where if somebody needs something, uh, what we call all rights out, all media, excluding theatrical, which is basically everywhere but a movie theater, you know, that's going to, you know, jump the rate up times 10 or, or even more. Got it. Um, so we're always hearing about the, the challenges facing producers in the industry, you know, the, the typical producer who, who makes a beat and, and that beat turns into a song for a, a, another recording artist. But what are, what are some of the challenges that producers in the licensing world face? Well, here's a challenge I want to tell you about um, that uh, you guys probably, some of you, some of you might know this, but a lot of you won't know this. Um, this might not answer your question completely, but it's something I really wanted to make sure I covered um, that kind of fits with your question. Um, one challenge or hurdle that you guys got to be aware of is some of these sample packs that producers create for people to make beats out of. Um, what, what can happen? And they say, oh, guaranteed clearance, you know, but, uh, you know, Guaranteed clearance, if you, maybe if you have $10,000, it's a guaranteed clearance or $5,000 or whatever, which you don't want to spend on a, on a sample clearance for some beat from a sample pack producer. Um, what, what's been happening in this industry and my clients have brought this to my attention, luckily never from, from myself, but from other music libraries that uh, might not have a, as much of a background in hip hop. Um, what's happening is some of these producers are making beats out of their sample packs and then the producer that made the sample pack will contact the production company that produces the show and said, hey, you used my beat in your show, and the, the show will say, I, I don't know what you're talking about. They'll find the beat. It'll, it'll turns out it's a, it, it contains a loop from a, from a sample pack, and then the original sample producer wants $10,000 from the TV show or whatever they say they want, and now – that TV show no, no longer works with that publisher or that uh, beat maker anymore and, uh, and is also covered because their license with, with the publisher usually uh, um, covers them for, 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 for things like that. Um, so it really just ends up screwing the guy who bought the sample pack. This guy, mm -hmm. The guy that bought the sample pack loses his client or – the publisher no longer works, wants to work with that person. Maybe the publisher loses that client, which could be a client producing tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars for that company. And it's just a really crappy situation that some people don't even realize that they're creating, or they might realize they're creating it and they just think it's a great extortion. It's a great business model for them. Because essentially that's what it is. I, uh, having worked, you know, with major labels and independent artists, what, really strikes me as a, as a major difference between, you know, what traditional placements uh, are for producers and, and what sync licensing and, and things like that. Well, I guess syncs specifically is the timing. Um, the, the timeline from creating a track for, you know, commercial or a company that, that needs, something or, or a, a, a film company or whatever the TV show, whatever the case is, is so much shorter than you mean the urgency. Well, I, I've done uh, tracks for major labels that have taken five minutes, five years to be released up to five years. And with 
you know, TV and film, it pretty much happens within the same month um, or, or within the same quarter, at least. And then that's another difference. I think with the major labels, they always make it seem like it's urgent. We need it now. We need it now. We need it now. But then once you get it to them, they start dragging their feet. Whereas with the licensing companies, they usually, they're good about paying pretty quickly, but everything is accelerated because it's so urgent. And I know, you know, right about 10 PM, if, 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 you're working on a project that I'm involved in or you want me involved in, you know, I'll get a call at about 10 PM from you saying, Hey man, I, I don't know if you, if you want to do this, but <laughs> something came up, we need some changes. We need some additions or, or we need a complete revamp. This has to be done by tomorrow afternoon. And a lot of producers, a lot of artists in general just don't work on that kind of timeline. Yeah. So I'd say that's a, a major challenge that a for lot of like myself to find people like that, to find people like that. And just for producers to be prepared for that kind of timeline and that kind of urgent scenario. Well, that's also how we're able to weed out who we can work with because we have to be able to count on that. You know, like I can't uh, uh, put forth your services saying that we can do something when I don't know if you could really do it or not in the sure. time needed. You know, and, and, and sometimes, sometimes we're ahead of the curve also. We have uh, some of our best composers uh, live in Germany and Switzerland. So we have an eight-hour ahead difference there for jobs we work on with those guys. Um, and, and there's a lot of hurry up and wait uh, as well uh, on, on our side. Like we have to uh, – whatever the client says, we got we to gotta do it, you know, you know, within reason. But they're usually not, you know, ridiculous. Um, but uh, – the reason why clients come back to us is because they tell us we get the job done and we're really easy to work with. And that alone, that reputation or, 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 or description alone carries you really, really far in this business. Because if somebody knows that they don't know if they can count on you, if they don't know if that you have the experience to accomplish what you need to accomplish, uh, or, or, or the, yeah, there's just there are too many reasons why they, they will work with somebody they're already comfortable with instead of, uh, working with a new uh, a, a new composer. You, when you license music, you get an upfront fee. That's not always the case. Uh, also, the yeah, and and also a lot of times, um, sync licenses don't necessarily pay royalties. They all you get is the upfront fee. Sometimes it's it's both. What uh, yeah, yeah. what what factors does that kind of scenario depend on? Well, let's say your music's going to get used in some Instagram video. You know, you, you shouldn't expect a whole bunch of royalties for that. Uh, or if it's used in some non-broadcast thing or a local radio spot or even a local TV spot. You know, just because it's on TV doesn't always mean you're going to make your, your royalties. There's a lot of factors that go into place as to why you don't get your royalties. And that's a, a fight that publishers and particularly smaller publishers have to fight all the time with the PROs, the, the performance rights organizations. Um, but... Um, uh, uh, um, could, could you could you refresh that question? Well, let me ask you this. So car commercials, right? They're kind of... That's that's something that would pay good royalties. Okay. Um, because a car commercial airs on uh, major networks regularly, uh, frequently. Um, I have an example. We, we're, we're getting the royalties on it this quarter, so I don't know what it's going to be. But we did a stickers commercial. Um, 17,000 plays so far in less than a year. That's really good. Really, really good. We haven't had many seven something plays seventeen thousand times in a year. Um, that's going to pay really good royalties. But if your song was on what's called, say, a regional network or a local channel, it, the cue sheets might not even get sent to the to the PRO, and and even if they did get sent, you still wouldn't get any money because it's uh, royalties are only paid out on on, on some things. Uh, in theory, they're they're paid out. You know, your NBCs, Fox, ABC, Disney, uh, Viacom shows, MTV, VH1, A and E networks, uh, Discovery. You know, they pay out royalties. But some of these other little channels, once you start to get up there to channel 153 or whatever, you're you're, you're probably not going to see any music, uh, any money uh, off of any placements from there. You you might get some upfront money, but 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 also a lot of these because competition is so thick and there's so much money to be made in 
these background television royalties, which are hundreds of millions of dollars a, a, a year probably, uh, it paid out in music just in the background of television shows and commercials and things. I think BMI said it paid out like $1.3 billion this year. Now, of course, that's not all television uh, uh, royalties, but they are all performance royalties, uh, you know, whether it's radio or, 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 or whatnot. Um, so it really depends on the channel. It really depends also on the time of day it airs. If your thing plays at six o'clock in the morning, it's a major difference than if it plays for uh, during prime time. Um, like I know from experience, uh, doing a prime time theme song, for instance, which is um, a theme song has a different uh, um, rate associated with the royalty than a regular background placement. I think I told you this before. A theme song for a, a particular network that we've worked with is uh, $700 a minute um, for theme usage, whereas, which is pretty good, um, you know, it might only air one minute of that 60 minutes or two minutes of that 60 minutes, but that's a really great job to get, uh, you know, $700 every week for, uh, for something you did years ago. But then again, like a, a background cue that is in the same show during the same time slot, but it's just a background cue and it was used for 30 seconds, that might generate $10. You know, it's a, there's a, a number of different factors that go into uh, why certain royalties are more uh, than others. So are, are you cool with answering some questions that are being uh, submitted in the chat room? 